Hello and welcome everyone to the interactive uh, problem solving session. Uh, so today's, uh, today uh, we have our session 12 and uh, today will be the last session uh, which will cover the content of week 12. Uh, hope I am audible. Uh, someone can text in the chat whether I am audible or not. Okay, thank you. So, so today, uh, let me come to uh, the week 12's discussion uh, was on uh, microwave communication systems and other application areas. Uh, so, uh, the lectures, uh, the video lectures, uh, you might have already watched the video lectures which covered the overview of radar uh, that is radio detection and ranging and then cellular communication, then satellite communication and other applications of microwave. So these were the uh, important areas covered in this week 12. So. Uh, let me come to uh, some of the uh, brief uh, uh, brief ideas and uh, uh, some basics uh, to discuss uh, along with some of the uh, questions. So, uh, although I have some few questions with me, uh, so I will try to follow this order. Uh, we will try to cover radar first. Uh, some some very basics and just a few questions on that then followed by a few questions on cellular communication and satellite communication okay so let's move on so I will quickly find out some questions uh, related to radar okay so before going into uh, some questions on radar uh, all of you know uh, what is a radar uh, so I don't have to explain that but uh, a little bit of briefing on that uh, so radar is nothing but a radio detection and ranging uh, wherein you can calculate uh, say if you have a target at some distance uh, you can calculate the distance to the target or the velocity or the speed with which the you can measure the estimate the velocity of the target so these are the kind of uh, 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 purpose of a radar so uh, if I just briefly talk about that uh, a simple radar system say you, if you have a transmitting antenna and you have another receiving antenna imagine it that way so this is kind of a bi-static radar configuration wherein uh, there is uh, different antennas for receiving uh, transmission and reception but if there is a same antenna for transmission and reception we call it as a uh, monostatic radar configuration say you have at some distance a target so if you want to assess the distance to that target so say if d is the distance to the target so 2 times this distance is being traveled so you send out a signal wait for the return signal to come back so if you know c into td so if you know the time delay with uh, or time taken for the return signal to come back to the receiver in that case you can calc multiply that with c to get uh, twice the distance to the target similarly the velocity of the target can be uh, 
uh, it's a function of so basically the velocity of the target is a function of i can uh, say that it's a function of the doppler frequency shift of the return signal uh, so if the uh, incoming uh, if the outgoing signal had a frequency f not and if the return signal had a frequency f not plus or minus f d where f d is the doppler freak, uh, shift or doppler uh, frequency shift so this velocity is a function of this doppler frequency shift uh, so to make it more clear so the doppler frequency or the velocity can be found as f d into c by 2 times f not so the velocity of a target can be calculated if you know the uh, doppler frequency shift so so that's a kind of very very brief idea so uh, you uh, all of you are aware of the different applications of uh, radars in uh, uh, military or uh, civilian application or imaging applications so there, there are a lot of things uh, and uh, i hope you are quite familiar with the uh, frequency bands uh, named like l s l band s band c band x band radars uh, so 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 you must be knowing the frequency range which will be helpful for you so and uh, these are the different frequency bands uh, there are many more ku band then k band ka band and so on so <clears throat> so from uh, so these are the different frequency bands and one more thing to talk about is uh, say if you have a transmitter uh, transmitting a power pt okay so imagine that you have a transmitter antenna uh, which transmits a power pt and uh, the gain of this antenna say that gain is g and uh, this is emitting a signal which will hit on a target okay and target has a radar cross section target is characterized by a radar cross section sigma distance to this target is say uh, r and the signal uh, wavelength is lambda so in that case i can write the received power i mean uh, the return signal is coming back so there is an in uh, ongoing signal and the return signal coming back so the received power can be written as pt g square lambda square sigma divided by 4 pi the whole cube into r raised to 4 so this is a very important relationship which is useful in many of the uh, uh, i mean in solving many of the numericals <coughs> so so if you uh, if you know the uh, uh, if you if you understand uh, the very important takeaway from this equation is if you uh, notice this the received power is inversely related to uh, r raised to 4 so as the distance from the uh, from the trans as the distance of this target from the transmitter increases so the received power is going to be very very small so it, it's the received signal is going to be very very weak as r increases this pr is going to be very weak uh, i think there is a question let me take that question uh, one doubt regarding the reflection of waves yeah uh, can you please ask what is the doubt is it specific to any particular band of frequency <clears throat> oh 
okay uh, I, I am not very sure whether I understood the question properly uh, so I, I, I hope uh, okay uh, so your question is are all bands capable of reflecting okay so first of all let me uh, um, slightly modify uh, one thing one is reflection of waves you so you said reflection of waves uh, so let me just slightly correct it so when it is going to uh, when it when when a wave is incident on the target so there is some power incident on the target and that will be uh, so there is a lot of scattering so scattering happens in all directions okay and some part of that scattered power is being collected back okay so uh, so it will be nice to say that it is a scattering which is being captured back okay so i can also say that it's it's reflecting back there is a return signal that is also okay but to be specific it's actually a scattering now uh, to to uh, coming to your question is it specific to any particular band of frequency so uh, you know that uh, this uh, radars work in the uh, high frequency uh, bands so it's in the order of gigahertz and uh, yes as you said it's it's it is for these kind of particular frequency bands so depending upon the frequency bands we need to design the uh, system needed for the communication so uh, if you have say i can give you a very uh, a simple uh, example say if you want to uh, design an s band say uh, so then you have to see that s band frequency range is 2 to 4 gigahertz and all the systems uh, the communication system uh, or whatever i mean say uh, from starting from antenna so antenna should have a resonance in this band 2 to 4 gigahertz band and rest all components so it should work on this frequency range so the system has to be designed based on the band at which we are operating and generally it should be a high frequency band it could be s band or it could be c band or it could be x band or anything so based on which band you choose we need to have some differences in the uh, system which we are designing so another question is uh, in satellite communication we are concerned about uh, okay uh, let me just uh, okay you are asking like so less than l band is not it is not possible say it is i can't say it is not possible so this works in perfectly in these kind of frequency bands any electromagnetic wave can go and come back but this is the band which is capable of giving the uh, see if you notice this uh, equation also it depends on lambda what is the received power depends on the lambda also so as we go for higher and higher frequencies uh, so that is a better choice so high high frequency is a better choice but uh, in fact if you want to have a, a larger range uh, the important parameter that determines is the transmitted power and the gain of that antenna so if you have a higher transmitted power and if you have a higher uh, gain then uh, you will be able to increase the range to which it can communicate okay uh, and the other question is in satellite communication we are concerned about penetration through ionosphere yes uh, so so that frequency should be able to penetrate through the ionosphere there, yes that we are concerned about but that's not the case of a uh, radar communication i 
I hope uh, this is clear. Okay, so let me move on. Okay, so any restriction in satellite frequencies? Yes, there is. Uh, there is a there is a band which is. Uh, uh, so you you know you can just look into the frequency bands. Uh, there is restriction or or I can say there is a, a certain range of bands in which we operate in case of satellite communication. Uh, especially the downlink frequency, uplink frequency. Yes, there is specific frequencies at which we operate. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think uh, let us look at the question once now. Uh, I think I covered some very basics of uh, radar. Okay, uh, in a Doppler radar system, a circulator allows the use of antenna for transmission as well as reception. So if you look at this uh, block diagram over here, this is a uh, Doppler radar system. Uh, so in this system if you notice you can see that this is our source which is uh, giving out the electromagnetic wave so this is the frequency and you see this is a circulator so what is the function of a circulator uh, so please understand this is say this if I take this as port 1 this is port 2 and this is port 3 so if any input coming to port 1, it will be only be transmitted to port 2. Okay. And so that is going to an antenna and it will be transmitted into the free space. Okay. Now it's going to free space, finally hitting the target. So this is my target. Hitting the target and a return signal is coming back will be captured by the antenna okay and then again a signal is coming back to the uh, port 2 of the circulator now what does the circulator do from port 2 it allows the transmission only to port 3 okay uh, so from port 3 there is another connection uh, wherein you have the down conversion and uh, for further processing okay so uh, the point here is the circulator allows the use of one antenna okay so we need only one antenna and it allows the use of one antenna for transmission as well as reception because circulator has this peculiar property that it will transmit from port 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 okay so, if you input anything in port 1, output will come only at port 2. If you, if there is any input at port 2, it will be transmitted to only port 3. So, this is the uh, advantage of a circulator. So, that helps in uh, using one antenna for transmission and reception. So, this is a true statement. I hope this uh, is clear. So let's move to the other question. For a monostatic radar with a transmit power PT, the received power from a target at a distance R is PR. If the target now moves to a distance 2R, received power PR becomes. Okay. So uh, this is a monostatic radar. So let me uh, brief you again. So, monostatic radar means uh, there is only one antenna which is being uh, used as transmitter as well as receiver. Okay. Now, as I told before, uh, while I was discussing the equation, the received power is proportional to 1 by uh, R raised to 4. So, if suppose, say, so uh, in this case, from the transmitter antenna, from the transmitter antenna, 
to the target okay say we have a distance r so if this r becomes 2r okay if this r becomes 2r what will happen to this power so let me tell you r becomes 2r 1 by 2r raised to 4 2r the whole raised to 4 now what is pr dash pr dash is 1 by 2 raised to 4 is 16 r raised to 4 or i can say it is pr by 16 okay i hope this is clear so pr dash is equal to pr by 16 option d Yeah, uh, so yeah, as as you requested, uh, yeah, yeah, the other session uh, after the session, uh, this is being recorded now. So the, after the session, it will be uploaded in the Google Sheet. Yes, it will be available to you. Uh, going to the next question. Okay. So this is again a question on radar. Uh, radar transmits a power. Say it's a transmitting power PT is equal to 96 pi watts. Okay. And uh, the antenna gain is 30 dB. And the operating frequency is 2 gigahertz. If the power received at the receiver is minus 60 dBm. So, let me write this. Power received at the receiver is minus 60 dBm. When the target is at a distance of 1 kilometer. So, let me write target distance is R. I can write it as 1 kilometer. And you, what you need to find is the radar cross section of the target. Sigma. Okay. So, once if you know the basic relationship or the basic equation, it is easy for you. So, let me try to write that basic equation for you. PR is equal to PT G square lambda square sigma divided by 4 pi the whole cube R raised to 4. So, this is the received power equation. So, we, we, uh, if you look at this equation, it is very clear that all the parameters except sigma is known to you or given in the question, you can easily calculate uh, sigma. Okay. So, uh, before going to solve this question, let me tell you uh, this gain value and the received power value, if you notice that is in dB or dBm. So, we need to convert it to linear so that we can substitute in this equation. So, that is the only thing which you need to take care of. So, let me tell you what is 30 dB in linear. Can you please uh, type in the chat? What is 30 dB in linear? So, what is the gain value? Gain. It's a gain. Yeah, so uh, someone has responded, it's 1000. So, in linear, the gain is 1000. And can you tell me what is this received power? So, in received power, uh, something to notice here is, it's not dB, it's dBm. So, it's minus 60 dBm. So, can you tell me what will be the linear uh, value of this minus 60 dBm one microwatt uh, I think I can just uh, quickly uh, 
show this. So 10 log PR is equal to minus 60 dBm. So basically PR is equal to 10 power minus 6 and please note because it is dBm that means dB milli. So this will be milli watts not watts it will be milliwatts okay so that will be uh, in fact uh, 10 power minus 9 watts so 10 power minus 9 watts will be 1 nanowatt okay uh, so this is 10 power minus 6 milliwatts so let us try to solve this question so how do we calculate sigma pr into 4 pi the whole cube r raised to 4 divided by pt g square lambda square so lambda will be c by f c is 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 2 into 10 power 9 which will be uh, 3 by 2 1.5 divided by 10 will be 0.15 okay now sigma can be calculated as 10 power minus 6 into 10 power minus 3 into 4 pi the whole cube into r raised to 4 r is 10 power 3 whole thing raised to 4 divided by pt is 96 pi into gain square so 10 power 3 square into lambda is 0 0.15 so 0 0.15 square okay so if you calculate this uh, you will get the answer for radar cross section uh, I think someone uh, any of you can just try calculating and uh, give the answer for the radar cross section of the target all of you can try solving we can all see whether we get get a same answer whoever gets the answer can type in the chat Please uh, don't read. Okay. This is zero. So I think I leave this question for uh, you to work out. So uh, the method is given. You can try. Yeah, some answer has come. Uh, 0.2924. Okay. Anybody else has got the same answer? I think there are no other responses yes uh, so uh, I leave this to you guys mm. 
Yes, this is the right answer, 0 0.293, 292924. Okay, so all of you can try this. Let me go to other question. Uh, in a Doppler radar, moving target produces a Doppler shift of 1000 hertz. So, so here, uh, need to understand the concept of Doppler radar and uh, see that uh, your mo target is not a stationary target, it's moving with some velocity. So the point is whenever the target is not stationary or when it is moving with some velocity, so when it's moving with some velocity, it could be moving towards our transmitter or it could be moving away. So, depending on that, the input frequency will be changed. So, F0, if, if F0 is the input frequency, the return frequency will be F0 plus or minus Ft, depending on whether uh, this is moving towards the transmitter or moving away from the transmitter. So, that this uh, difference in frequency is called as Doppler frequency shift. So here we denote it as FD and that is 1000 Hertz. Uh, and if the operating frequency, so that means F0, it is given as 2 gigahertz, uh, the speed of the target in kilometer per hour. Speed of the target means its velocity V so how do we calculate it fd we know the equation for fd it is 2 v f naught by c or v can be written as fd into c by 2 into f naught fd is 1000 into 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 2 times f naught is 2 into 10 power 9 Can you quickly tell me what is the answer for velocity? Please try to solve this and quickly tell me what is the velocity. So when you calculate it, uh, here there is a trick in the question if you notice this is not in meter per second this is in kilometer per hour so whatever answer you get might be in meter per second yes you yes all of you have got the answer in uh, 75 that is in meter per second uh, please make sure that you convert it to kilometer per hour Please try to uh, calculate in kilometer per hour and then give the final answer. Okay. So, uh, Yes, you calculate, you will get the answer. Yes, you are right. You will get uh, 270 km per hour. It's the closest value to what we calculate. So, this is option A. I hope this is clear. Any doubts? Okay, uh, let's go to this question. 
microwave energy is used for industrial heating so a very simple question i think you can answer this please type in the chat uh, is this true or false can ma microwave energy be used for industrial heating yes it's a true statement it can be used okay now coming to some questions uh, so some question in cellular communication okay so this was one of the uh, topics covered in in the video lectures uh, in the past week so in cellular system uh, communication system uh, all of you know that uh, the 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 main goal uh, of any cellular system or any at any time is uh, we need to provide a high system capacity with a limited uh, radio spectrum available to us so and you all know that as the distance from the uh base stations increase uh, the transmitted signal power is going to reduce uh, unless we have some other base stations to compensate that so for uh, specially separate users uh, if they operate at the same frequency uh, so it's that means the frequency has been reused uh, it it can be reused Uh, with minimal interference if you design a proper cellular system the uh, proper cellular system so uh, that is how we accommodate a large number of users uh, although we have a limited number of uh, frequency channels or we have a uh, limited radio spectrum so uh, the designing the cellular system is uh, really very important say uh, so you have come across uh, something called as uh, this hexagonal uh, cellular arrangement where you have seen that uh, these kind of uh, cellular arrangement uh, so where you saw that uh, say if this uh, these both are named as a and these both are b so what can i say about these cells where these two cells i can say that it is co channel cells that means uh, the cell this cell as well as this cell so let me just shade this so these both cells use the same uh, set of frequencies or the same set of channels uh, so this will be called as co channel and uh, because they use the same set of frequency that means we are doing a frequency reuse frequency reuse there could be interference okay that is called as co channel interference so between the say uh, cells which use the same set of frequency we have something called as co channel interference due to the frequency reuse so to avoid that this transmitter power level that means if there is a base station here the transmitter power level from this base station and transmitter power level from this base station and also the reuse distance that means the distance from this one, this cell to this cell that is called as reuse distance so these two has to be designed properly okay so the transmitted power level and also the distance reuse distance these two has to be designed properly to avoid this uh, co channel interference now uh, a very uh, uh, very uh, so very basic thing uh, to talk about say uh, if you are if you if if there is a uh, mobile station that means if you are moving uh, 
so you are always uh, say if you have a mobile phone or something and you 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 are talking over the mobile phone so some at a, at a certain time and at a certain place you are in constant uh, i mean you are in linked with one base station say bs1 or something like that which is present in this cell maybe i can call this as cell a and if your mobile station is moving to uh, the, which is going out of the range of this base station 1 and if you are going to the range of this base station 2 so which is present in cell b okay uh, so your signal ha will have a handoff from the base station 1 to the base station 2 so this is a very important thing to uh, notice so sometimes uh, will have a break in the signal uh, if we are traveling and we and at the same time if we are talking so from one base station to the other base station if you are having a handover then you might observe that there is a breakage of the signal so uh, this happens because of this handoff from one base station in one cell and to the other base station in the other cell so Uh, this these are some of the basics to understand about uh, cellular system there is much more and many more things uh, in the video lectures uh, which is being covered so let me tell you the signal to interference or signal to noise ratio uh, of this signal to noise ratio or signal to interference ratio in case of a cellular communication does not depend on the cluster size okay so it does not depend on what is this size whole the th size of the whole cluster okay but it depends on uh, other parameters that like the transmitted power level and the distance between the co channel cells and the radius of that particular cell okay so but it will never depend on the um, cluster size so this is a true statement i hope uh, this question is clear So moving on to another question from satellite communication. So uh, to give a brief of uh, satellite communication, um, so generally uh, this is with the frequency bands C K U K A bands. So somebody in between uh, had asked about the uh, satellite frequencies. so these are the generally the frequency bands where we have the satellite communication so please note this uh, and uh, so in case of satellite communication uh, let me make a short uh, intro to that it's not detailed but still so say if you have a user environment i mean you have some data from user uh, so from the user it is being uh, data it could be voice or it could be data or video whatever it may be it is being collected from the user and there is a terrestrial interface okay uh, which will uh, communicate that to the earth station okay so from the earth station you if you notice these are parabolic antennas uh, which will transmit it to a very large distances through the rf link okay and then at the satellite
hello hope i am audible ah, okay uh, so i had a power issue sorry for uh, the interruption so just uh, coming back to our discussion on uh, satellite communication so from the user uh, there is a terrestrial interface to which the uh, where the earth station is being communicated and from the earth station we have large parabolic antennas which is having very high gain uh, capable of uh, taking the signal to a larger distance say to kind of uh, thousands of kilometers where the satellites are and from the satellite uh, we get the signal back through the RF link uh, to the very same earth station and then from the earth station the user is being communicated. So this is the kind of general uh, communication link uh, wherein uh, let us uh, talk about the carrier signal or the carrier to noise ratio. Say the carrier signal can be written as EIRP into lambda by 4 pi r the whole square into g r by l so carrier to noise ratio will be this eirp lambda by 4 pi r the whole square g r by l so noise can be written as k t s b okay k t b so uh, so the question here is Keeping other parameters unchanged, if the carrier frequency in a satellite communication system is decreased, carrier to noise ratio increase. So that is the question. So if the carrier frequency decrease, lambda will increase. So if the lambda increases, C by N will increase. So this is a true statement. So the question is about the carrier to noise ratio. So if you know the equation for carrier to noise ratio and what parameters it depends, it is an easy, uh, easy go to look at. And uh, there is one more question. Okay, so that question is on a transponder in a satellite communication system. Uh, so, to talk about the transponder system, uh, hope you have gone through the lectures where you have observed, say, if you have a satellite communication system with a receiver, and uh, there you have a system for down conversion, okay, down conversion wherein you mix, there is a mixer to mix the LO frequency, the lock loss letter frequency with the received signal frequency, you down convert it, okay, and then there is an IF amplifier to amplify that, and then there is something like another mixer which can do the up conversion by mixing again with the lock loss letter frequency, uh, after which you get the FT and it could be. Uh, amplified finally okay so this is a transponder system so this transponder system in in case of a satellite communication uh, what it can do is a frequency translation and also amplification so this if amplifier and power amplifier does the amplification at two different stages and also there is a frequency translation. So first there is a down conversion and then there is an up conversion. So uh, that is basically a mixer. In a mixer there is a frequency translation happening when two frequencies are mixed. So that is about the transponder. So yes this is a true statement. So, uh, I think I discussed all the questions.
if you have any doubts you can ask Okay, so, so there is uh, pending questions in the discussion forum. Okay, I'm really sorry about this. Uh, so, Eva, so this is being, so the discussion forum is not handled from my end. So, if there is any question, uh, you can ask that or uh, maybe you can uh, email me. I can give you my email ID. So uh, I will uh, I will inform the uh, team uh, who handles the discussion. For